Go to the mirror and take a close look at your face. Ah, oh, fine, I'll wait. See all those odious pimples, red dots, and blah? Congrats! Your cells have a built-in defense mechanism against aging. In the future, you'll have a better chance of looking younger than those who have clear skin now. Are you on the other side? Well, you're beautiful now anyway, so we Don't walk away from that mirror just yet. Now check your body shape. Those clever lab guys say that females with hourglass bodies are smarter. It happens because their bodies produce more of the omega-3 fats that foster brain development. If you're a man, check this out. If your beard is bushy and long, I'm looking at you, ZZ Top, your scalp hair's in danger. To keep your head in thermal balance and compensate for the heat trap by your beard, your top hair will sacrifice itself and fall out. Yay for shaving! Those Hollywood guys want so much to thrill us with their flicks that they may forget about reality. But I won't let them get away with this. No, no, not on my watch. Try to picture a gladiator. Would this happen to be an athletic, handsome man with a six-pack? Congrats, you swallowed the bait. Turns out, these combatants had quite the layer of fat. They needed it to have more endurance and fight better. You have two handkerchiefs and a ribbon. Try to create something that will shake the world to its core. I'll count to three. One, two, you've got nothing, huh? Well, you'd make a bra out of it, just like Mary Phelps did in 1910. That day, she was getting ready for a ball. As usual, she put on a corset, but suddenly it poked out from under her gown. Mary asked her maid to bring her these three very things, and the first bra was born. There's an opinion that quality products are nothing more than cheap products stamped with a brand name and sold at a higher price. While some of you may agree or disagree, I want to introduce you to an olive oil factory employee. He shared that they usually have one kind of oil that is put in different containers and sold at various prices. Some bottles are labeled as imported, others as the highest quality, but it's still the same oil in all of them. Employers love offering candidates a cup of coffee during interviews, but this isn't good manners. It's a trick. As the interview concludes, they're carefully watching for what the candidate does. Will they ask where to put the cup, leave it on the table, or wash it by themselves? This may speak volumes about a person and their manners, and even show how fast the candidate will fit in with the team. You don't look as bad as you may think. If you don't trust me, perhaps an experiment with an FBI-trained artist will help convince you. The artist was asked to draw two portraits of several women. The first was based on the women's self-descriptions. The second, on strangers' descriptions. Turns out, women do exaggerate their flaws, but strangers focus on positive traits. I'm curious if they'd notice my crooked nose. I know it's better to stay away from negativity, but now there's proof from an experiment involving 700,000 Facebook users. Over one week, they were shown negative content. And guess what? They started to emphasize and share similar negative emotions and stories. But when people saw positive posts, they shared happier items and displayed kindness, love, and compassion. So, grow the love. You can start by sharing this positive video. Try to find any possible connection between childhood socioeconomic status and a cup of coffee. You can't? Well, me neither. But some clever people did. Turns out that those who grew up poor may squeeze the cup with their whole hand, while those from wealthy families use the cup's handle instead. How proper. To trust or not to trust, that's the question. That pops up in my head each time I meet somebody, in the bad Shakespearean accent too. And now my answer will be to trust, because of an experiment. Along a road with self-service fields where anyone could pick flowers, vegetables, or fruit, there was a sign with a price on it and a box for payment, but no clerks or attendants. So what do you think people did? There was almost no thefts, and sometimes customers even left more money than needed. 
Just imagine how poor our life would be if countries didn't cooperate. Oh wait, you don't have to use your imagination, because there was a whole campaign about that in Germany. Over a weekend, a supermarket in Hamburg only stocked those products that were produced in Germany, and shoppers found almost empty shelves. The demonstration was even more powerful as it was targeted against any form of racism. Today is your interview day. You wake up very early, slip into your best dress. I like some conservative heels to go with it. Plan your route to avoid any traffic jams, and finally you're there. You wait 10 minutes, and another 10 minutes, and then another 15 minutes, and no one seems to care. Infuriation! But don't be so impatient. This is a trick employers may deliberately use. It can reveal your emotional stability in stressful situations and how much you really want to get the job. For men, nipples are pretty useless because guys don't make enough prolactin to stimulate lactation and can't produce milk. Really? That, that's the only reason? Evolution, it's time to have a little chat. Why? Well, turns out, in the early stages of fetal development, a child is sexless, and nipples present in both men and women just in case. Yeah, tell that to my moobs. If you're confident in your roots, I've prepared a short story for you. 67 people were invited to take a DNA test, and it showed that not one of them belonged purely to any race or ethnicity. And those who had prejudices against specific nations or groups often had their genes in their DNA. Ha! Oh, irony, thou art a heartless mistress. This small experiment helped the participants change their attitudes towards other people. Some of them even suggested applying this test in schools to help get rid of xenophobia, racism, and national extremism. Many people get tattoos to honor loved ones. While it is a touching tradition, doctors and tattoo artists suggest that there are some places for tattoos that are big no-nos. They are your armpits, ribcage, face, ankles, and the area behind your knees. These parts have tons of nerve endings and may turn your life into a nightmare, even if only for a couple hours. Ouch. What can be sweeter than watching people help animals? Ah, here's a nice lady who found a tortoise and is going to release it into water. Stop! No! No tortoises were hurt in this video because I imagined the whole thing. Hey, at least I didn't imagine her making turtle soup. While turtles and tortoises may look very similar, they're different reptiles. Turtles are aquatic and have markings that resemble stains and circles on the water while tortoises are land animals and spend most of their time on the ground. 21% of all heart attacks happen on Mondays because our stress hormones pour into our bloodstream at the beginning of the week. Duh, that's not a surprise. Though it is another in the laundry list of reasons to hate Mondays. But the second peak happens on Fridays? No, Mother Nature, not the best day of the week. Try waking up slowly in the morning and reducing the intensity of evening workouts. My sources say it may help reduce your risk. There are tons of bad guys floating around your house. I can't see them, but I know their names. They are formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, trichloroethylene, and ammonia. Our bodies really weren't made to deal with these. Good news, we have big helpers on our side. Spider plant, Gerbera, and many other green cuties will vacuum up those dangerous toxins so you don't breathe them in. Chop, chop, lollipops. Time to hit the plant shop. Youch! Tearing off this pore strip hurts! But the fact that it neither prevents blackheads nor reduces oil buildup stings even more. Ouch! Stop it! By the way, the adhesive only removes the top layers of dead skin cells, but leaves tons of dirt inside the pores. So, you still need a deep cleaning anyway. Well, I'm not doing this again. It's refund time. I can tell all about you just from your sleep position. Love lying on your side? You're a calm and reliable person. Prefer the fetal position, then you often feel the need to be protected and understood. If you'd sell your soul to sleep on your stomach, you're impulsive and like taking the initiative. Lastly, if you sleep on your back, which is boring and unimaginative, you're most likely a positive person who loves life and being the center of attention. Let me know in the comments if I nailed it.